فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم. So the ayah dilala, the indication that the ayah is given is to follow Islam that is obligatory. So three introductions. Number one, there's a severe warning in the one who looks for a religion other than Islam. Two, there is a severe warning that will bring about destruction. And the destruction will not be except to a person who leaves off wajib or comes with something haram. And the third one is safety from destruction if the person surrenders and adheres to the religion of Islam. These are three muqaddimat which show that Islam is wajib. Then the author moves on to the second evidences, second evidence to prove his heading and chapter, which is Inna Dina Inda Allah Islam. The religion to Allah is Islam. And the dalala for this is that Allah specifically narrowed down to what is it that he's pleased with. And he didn't say anything else other than Islam. So the ibadah in which we were created for, which we were commanded, it will, not, it will not occur unless we come with Islam. So Islam is wajib. So we can come with the ibadah in which we were created for. The third evidence that the author brings is And the way that the author is using this evidence to prove his chapter is number one فَاتَّبِعُوهُ follow it so we're, we're commanded to follow what? the straight path that was mentioned in the verse which is Islam because Sirat al-Mustaqeem in the hadith of Nawas ibn Sam'an which is in Muslim Imam Ahmad which is a Sanad which is Hassan the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said that the Sirat al-Mustaqeem is Islam so we're told to follow it <clears throat> and as you all know, the Amr shows obligation. The second thing in the ayah that the author is using is And do not follow the paths. So it will take you away from the straight path, which is a nahyu, prohibition. So we were commanded to follow the straight path and we were prohibited to follow a path other than that path. Then the author brought them the call of who? Mujahid ibn Jabrin, al makiyu one of the students of Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas said that the other parts are innovation and shubuhat, doubts. Al-Darimi narrated in his Sunan, Bisanad in Sahih, an authentic chain of narration. So we're not allowed to follow innovation and we're not allowed to follow doubts. Subul is everything that opposes the straight path. Kufr enters there, Bid'ah enters there, and all types of ma'asi, whether it be minor or major, they enter there. The fourth evidence that the author rahimahullah, brings is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that she said that the Prophet said, Man ahadata fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fawaraddun. The hadith is in Sahih al Bukhari and Muslim. That's why the author said, Akhrajahu. Meaning, it's tethniya, dual. He means by it Bukhari and who? Muslim. But the wording that the author used, which is man man ahadata fi amrina hada ma laysa minhu. The wording that the author brought. Which is the wording after that one. Man amila amala laysa alayhi amruna fa waraddun. This is only in Muslim. Connected. Bukhari did narrate it, but he narrated it mu'allaqan. That wording, man amila amala laysa alayhi amruna fa waraddun. What is it that the author is trying to use from this evidence? He's trying to use from this that the muhdath, fidini, the thing that's been introduced into the religion is rejected and it's prohibited. Because what Allah tabarak wa ta'ala accepts, as we all know, is Islam, the religion that was sent upon the Messenger, the religion in which the Prophet came with, the religion in which Allah sanctioned. So anything Allah did not sanction is not part of the things that He will accept. And it's not from the religion which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges and accepts. The, the fifth
So innovation, is it from Islam? Are we told to stay away from innovation? Are you with me? So what does that mean that we have to, then what does that mean? It's obligatory to hold on to Islam and it's obligatory to stay away from innovation. That's what he's trying to use from this evidence. Number five, he brings a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he said, Kullu ummati yadkhuluna jannah. The hadith is Sahih al-Bukhari. The author is trying to use this for the chaptering two things. Number one, Man ata'ani dakhala al-jannah. Anyone who obeys me will enter jannah. That you deserve to, to be placed into jannah by following the command that was set for you and staying away from that which was prohibited from you. And the greatest command that you are commanded with is to enter into Islam. Islam is wajib. The second thing that he's trying to use this hadith for is وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَقَدْ أَبَى And anyone who disobeys me, he has refused to enter Jannah. So obey, disobeying the Messenger sallallahu means to turn away from what he came with. And from the greatest thing that a person can turn away from is al-Islam. And due to that a person then deserves to be placed in the hellfire due to the sin that he has come with. And there is no sin greater than a person turning from the obligatory command, the obligation of, a, the obligation of Islam. The sixth evidence that this author brings is the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala عن أمة that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أبغض الناس إلى الله ثلاثة and Imam al-Bukhari narrated it three things I mean, three people are most hated to Allah تبارك وتعالى and the author the one he wants from this is ومبتغي في الإسلام سنة جاهلية it is anybody who in Islam takes a path of jahiliyyah Sunnatun Jahiliyyah is what? Kullu ma khalafa ma jaa bihi rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Jahiliyyah is everything that opposes that which the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with It can be qawl, it can be a fi'l, it can be i'tiqadat, beliefs, it doesn't matter Anything that you say or you do or you believe that is not part of Islam is Sunnah Jahiliyyah and this is the most hated person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The parts are two. Sunan al-Islam, which consists of two things. Al-Fara'id wa nawafil The obligatory things and the voluntary things. And those are all loved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second one is Sunan Jahiliyyah. It's everything that opposes that which the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. And that is most hated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anybody who takes a path in Islam, a path of jahiliyyah, is from the most hated people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he is going against the sunnah, sunnah al-Islam, the path of Islam, which was obligatory for him to follow. That's what the author is trying to take from that. والدليل السابع the seventh evidence is حديث حذيفة بن اليمان رضي الله تعالى عنه that he said يا معشر القراء بخاري narrated it موقوفا was the statement of حذيفة بن اليمان and محمد بن وضاح with him in his كتاب البدع والنهي عنها وإسناده الصحيح his chain of narration is authentic ودلالة على مقصود ترجمتي and the author's usage of this hadith for the chaptering is istaqimu to be upright and steadfast with the statement of his فَإِنْ أَخَذْتُمْ يَمِينًا وَشِمَالًا if you take the right or the left فَقَدْ ضَلَلْتُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا then you have become misguided a click up misguidance if you go towards your right or if you go towards your left you become misguided don't be upright and steadfast Qurra according to the urfi salaf, the word qurra, according to the usage of the salaf, it meant al alimun bil Qur'an wa sunnah al amilun bihima. It is the ones who knew the Qur'an and the sunnah and that were implementing it both. It wasn't only referred to the people who read the Qur'an. That's how we use it today. The eighth evidence that the author, rahimahullah, brings forward is 
By the way, this statement of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, Abu al-Fadl ibn Hajar al-Asqalani wa Fathul Bariyu, he mentions that this hadith takes the hukm al it takes the, state, the ruling of the Prophet's statement. Because the author, sorry, because Hudayfa mentions in this hadith, an ghaybin la yudra, unseen that is not known. And as the qa'idah is, إِذَا أَخْبَرَ الصَّحَابِيُّ عَنِ الْغَيْبِ الَّذِي لَا مَتْقَلَ لِلْرَأِيِّ فِيهِ قِيلَ إِنَّ لَهُ حُكْمُ الرَّفْعِ If a companion mentions something from the unseen that it can't be brought about with opinion, this is something لَا مَتْقَلَ لِلْرَأِيِّ فِيهِ He could not have come with this based on what? Based on an opinion. The scholars, they say, إِنَّ لَهُ حُكْمُ الرَّفْعِ It takes as though the Prophet said it. So we say, it's مَوْقُوفُ لَفْضًا مَرْفُوعُ حُكْمًا and its wording is mawquf, but it's in its ruling, it is what? Marfu'. It's the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as though he said it. The eighth evidence which the author brings is the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that he said, لَيْسَ عَامٌ إِلَّا وَالَّذِي بَعْدَهُ شَرٌ مِّنْهُ Ibn Waddah narrated in his kitab al-bid'a wal-nahi, wal-nahi anha, as the author attributed it to him, وَإِسْنَادُهُ ضَعِيفٌ His chain of narration is weak. وَرَوَاهُ الطَّبَرَانِيُّ فِي الْمُعْجَمِ الْكَبِيرِ بِإِسْنَادٍ آخَرَ ضَعِيفٍ Also, Tabaraniyu narrated in his Mu'jam al-Kabir with a chain of narration which is weak. It has a third chain of narration that was attributed to Ya'qub ibn Shayba فِي مُسْنَدِهِ in his Musnad. If you bring all of those turuq together, all of them, يَقْضِي أَنْ يَكُونَ الْأَثَرُ حَسَنًا Then the Athar, insha'Allah ta'ala, it becomes Hasan, it becomes sound. And also this statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, by the way, it is, takes the ruling of Rafa. Because لِأَنَّهُ لَا يُقَابِلُ مِنْ قِبَلِ الرَّأِي Because لَا مَدْخَلَ لِلرَّأِي فِيهِ It's not something he could have brought about with opinion. So it takes as though it is the Prophet's statement. Anas ibn Maliki radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, اِسْبِرُوا بِي بَيْشَلْ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَأْتِي عَامُنِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِلَّا وَالَّذِي بَعْدَهُ شَرِّ مِنْهُ سَمِعْتُهُ مِنْ نَبِيِّكُمْ that the Prophet said, be patient. That there won't come a time, except the one after it is even greater. I heard this from your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said something close to that. He said, لَيْسَ عَامٌ إِلَّا وَالَّذِي بَعْدَهُ شَرٌ مِنْهُ That there is never going to come a time except the time after it is worse. And it doesn't mean, as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala mentions, in that hadith, it doesn't mean, لا أقول I will not say to you عام أخ صاب من عام that a year is more greener than another year ولا أمير خير من أمير that a leader is better than another leader لكن but ذهاب علماءكم your scholars are going to die وخياركم and the wise ones amongst you are going to die ثم يحدث أقوام then a group of people are going to introduce in the religion يقيسون الأمور بآرائهم and they're going to come with analogies, and they're going to come with opinions that are far from the textual evidence. And then the religion becomes destroyed based on these people's opinions that they put forward. I think. The word thalm, it means khalal, deficiency. And it calls evil to the religion. So what's the dilala of the author's statement? It means this. لكن ذهاب علماءكم وخياركم ثم يحدث أقوام يقيسون الأمور بأرائهم فينهدم الإسلام ويثلم. The author is trying to take this as the usage for his chapter because these people's dying and these people's going is going to destroy Islam. Is going to what? Is going to destroy Islam. And the reason why it's going to destroy Islam, because they were sticking to Islam and those after them were not sticking to Islam when they were told to stick to it. And it is wajib to stick to, it, it is wajib to, stick to the religion. That's where the author is using this as an evidence. And today, that, and today if you look at the situation that the Muslims are living in, look at the majority of the people who are speaking about the deen and how they look and how they speak you will realize that they are on one side and the religion is on another side. Now. Now. <laughs> 
الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الإسلام أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت الحرام إن استطعت إليه سبيلا أن تحكم عليه وفي ووفيه عن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه مرفوعا المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده والمهاجر من هجر ما نهى الله عنه وعن بهز وعن وعن بهز بن حكيم عن ابيه عن جده انه سال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الاسلام فقال ان تسلم قلبك لله وان تولي وان تولي وجهك الى الله وان تصلي الصلاه المكتوبه وتؤدي الزكاه المفروضه رواه احمد وعن وعن ابي قلابه عن رجل من اهل الشام على ابيه انه سال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من ما الاسلام؟ فقال ان تسلم قلبك لله وان يسلم المسلمون من لسانك ويدك. قال اي الاسلام افضل؟ قال الايمان بالله. قال وما الايمان بالله؟ قال ان تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الاخر والبعث بعد الموت. The author رحمه الله هي هي explains حقيقة الإسلام ومعناه what is the reality of Islam what does Islam mean and if you look at the niza the discussion at hand between the different groups within Islam today if you look at it the biggest khilaf that they have within themselves is تفسير الإسلام what's the definition of an Islam what does Islam mean? These groups that you find today, fi sahati da'wah, on the in the field of da'wah, you will find that their tafsir of al Islam is tafsir un siyasi, a political, motivated Islam. Read the works of Abu A'la al Maududi, mathalan. Read the works of Sayyid Qutb, for example. And you will see that when they define Islam, Haqiqatul Islam عندهم is what? Tafsir Siyasi. ولذلك الشيخ عبد الحق التركماني who is still alive, who used to reside in Leicester. Now he moved to Turkey. But he comes. He opened an institute and he called it Tafsir Islam. And he brings very strong articles and very strong work in what it means tafsirul islam and i advise you brothers to take time out and to try to familiarize yourself with it let's look at what shaykh al islam muhammad ibn abdul wahab defines islam as al islam al shar'i my beloved brothers first of all it has two usages ahaduhuma the first one is a generic general general usage which is al istislam lillahi bit tawhid wal inqiyad lahu bit ta'a wal bara'atu wal khul wal bara'atu wal khulus min al shirk wa ahlihi which is al istislam lillahi bit tawhid it is to submit to allah with monotheism oneness in ibadah wal inqiyad lahu bit ta'a and it is also to adhere to him in obedience wal bara'atu and to free yourself wal khulus min al shirk from shirk wa ahli and its people and as we said before, if you just say al istislam lillahi bit tawhid, the rest, the rest, fa inna al jumlatain al madkuratain, it is bi manzilat al tabi' al lazim lil jumlat al ula. It's min bab dalalat al iltizam. It already enters it. It already enters the meaning of al istislam lillahi bit tawhid. The second usage of al Islam is a specific usage, and it has two meanings. The first one is the religion in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent with. This is called Islam. And that is the hadith ibn Umar. Radiallahu ta'ala anhuma which he says in hadith sahihain min hadith ibn Umar. Bunya al-Islam ala khamsin Islam was built upon, upon five pillars. The second usage for the specific is al-a'mal al-zahira the apparent actions it's the apparent actions fa'ina to sama islaman and that's what it means when 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 islam and iman are mentioned together 
Islam becomes the outer actions and Iman becomes the inner actions. And the author, Rahimahullah, he used verses that show the general Islam for the specific meanings of Islam. And he mentions five evidences. The first one is Qawluhu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah فَإِنْ حَاجُّوكَ فَقُلْ أَسْلَمْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّهِ Al-Aya وَدِلَالَتُهُ He's used it for this for the chaptering at hand which is the reality of Islam تفسير Islam It means أَسْلَمْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّهِ is what he wants from it The reality of Islam is الْإِسْتِسْلَامُ الْعَبْدِ لِلَّهِ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ is to place your face in submission and surrender to him Islam. But this is what Bimalahu Alam, its general meaning. and also he's using it within that same verse. And also the one who follows me, the messenger saying, after me. They also surrender to you, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second evidence that the author uses is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar. Al Islam and Tashad Allah ilaha illallah. The author attributed this to Bukhari and Muslim. <coughs> and the dilala of the scholars, Sheikh's usage here is Al Islam and Tashhad Allah ilaha illallah. That's what he means from it. That the tafsir of Islam is La ilaha illallah. And this is his ma'nan khas. This is the specific usage of the word Islam. It is the religion that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent with. The third evidence that the author uses here is Hadith Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu Al-Muslim man salim al-Muslimun min lisanihi wa yadi which is in Sahihayn min Hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As and it is not min Hadith Abi Huraira. As for the Hadith Abu Huraira Farawahu Tirmidhi wa Nasai wa Isnadu Hassan And the usage of this hadith for the author, for the chapter he's made is what? That the Muslim, his Islam is connected to what? Salamatil khalqi min lisanihi, that the people are safe from his tongue and his hand. And all of that to occur from him, first of all, what, was, what is in place? Mutawaqifun ala kuni mustasliman lillah. That he is a person who's already surrendered to Allah. Because the hadith is trying to say that you don't use your tongue against the people and that you don't use your hands against the people except that which you have been given permission for. And then the permission comes from somebody you've surrendered to. And that's the haqiqah to Islam that you're a slave. That the master tells you, you can say this to this person, okay. You can't say this to this person, okay. All of it is based upon what? Illa fi ma Allahu bihi, except that which Allah has given permission to you for. That's servitude, that's slavery. The fourth evidence that the author puts forward is what? Hadith Mu'awiyah ibn Haydah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who narrated from his granddad, Bahz ibn Hakim, and now Sa'ala Rasulullah that he asked the messenger, عن الإسلام what Islam means فقال the Prophet said أن تسلم قلبك لله Imam Ahmed narrated in his Muslim with this wording the usage of the author here is apparent because the question that was put to the Prophet was about what's Islam and the definition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what Islam is the Prophet defined it here and Islam encompasses brothers that your heart faces Allah Iqbalul Batini, you, you face Allah internally, you surrender to Him internally, and you also surrender to Him from the outer. And Tuslim Qalbaka Lillah is that you internally surrender to Him. Wa Antuwali Wajhaka Lillah. It means that you 
externally surrender to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's the reality of what Islam is batinan wa zahira that you surrender to him internally and externally and that's the haqiqatul Islam which the hadith mentions the fifth evidence that the author brings forward which is the last one is a man min ahli sham an abihi annahu sa'ala rasulullah that he asked the messenger mal islam was islam faqala the prophet said an tuslima qalbaka lillah and the author did not, did not attribute this hadith but in his majmu'ati majmu'ihi fil hadith it is majmu' fil hadith muhammad abdul hab he attributed he attributed it to musnad imam ahmad But he's not in Muslim Imam Muhammad. The usage of the author here again is the same usage that he used the one before it, which is an tuslima qalbaka lillah, that you face your heart towards Allah, which is internally, and you also face Allah externally. And that the people find safety from your tongue and from your hand. We'll stop there now, inshallah ta'ala. We'll take a break and we'll come back after, uh, after Salatu al-Dhuhr.